Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at Ajax data sources with Bokeh. Let's get started. So in recently I've had a lot of people asking about more streaming data and specifically Bokeh server applications. And some sources of data that we use are sometimes Ajax sourced data, okay? And how we usually want to deal with that is we need to help and utilize the Ajax data source uh, API from Bokeh. So to set up an Ajax data source, we're gonna to need to actually configure it with a URL to a rest endpoint and a polling interval. Okay, so we're gonna actually go on and get started this and we'll talk about it a little bit more as we go on. So let's go on and create up a new file here and let's save this as something, let me actually put this uh, where I want it to be. So this will be under Bokeh projects and we'll call this, uh, Bokeh Ajax example 01.py. And what are we going to do here is again, we're going to have to set up everything so that it's going to run in the browser. So we'll probably need uh, some, let's use some Flask maybe to do this. And let's also go on and uh, set up a couple other things. So first, Let's go on and get our import. So let's import numpy as np. Uh, let's import, oh, let's do from flask import flask jsonify make response and request. And then we're also going to grab from bokeh uh, dot models here we want to import our Ajax data source and a custom JavaScript and then from bokeh dot plotting we also want to import figure and show and then we'll go on and maybe let's discuss this just a, a little bit more okay so we're gonna to want to update our code locally. So we're going to actually, from this, we'll just, we'll make up our, our own data, okay? So we won't actually go to some API and use it. You guys can test this out on your own. Uh, and then there's a couple different ways that we can actually update locally. So we can either do this by replacing the existing local data entirely or by appending new data to the existing data, okay? And we can configure this uh, as we go on. Now we also, replacing the local data is kind of gonna be the default setting uh, that's gonna be used, okay? We can either pass uh, replace or append, okay, to our Ajax data source, um, specifically the mode argument, which we'll, I'll show you here in just a minute. Uh, so let's go on and also maybe, um, let's see, how what, what would we like to do with this? So, what type of data are we gonna want? All right, so let's go on and actually just create up. Uh, first off, we'll actually want to do a couple things here. So we want to use uh, Bokeh, okay? So our Bokeh code here. And we're going to create up an adapter, okay? And this is gonna be using our custom JS argument here. We're going to create up some code Okay, and then let's uh, put this over here. So we'll do um, const result here is going to be uh, x such that some array, y such that some array. We'll do closed curly brackets. And then we want uh, const, and then we're going to create up a set here of points and then we want this to be CB data because this is going to be our callback and we're going to call back our response. And then, whoops, put an end, excuse me, response. And then, whoops, going to have to clean up the audio here in a minute. Next, we need to create a for loop. So for whoops, for const here of some array of x and y. 
of points, then we want to go on and do our result dot x dot push x result dot dot y dot push whoops push y and then we want to go on and return the result and that should it should be good um, now let's go on and double check we'll put a little bit of cleaning in here uh, now the next thing we want to do is to source out our data for Ajax so we'll just create up source we want our Ajax source here and data uh, here uh, for our URL here is going to be HTTP semicolon slash slash uh, localhost um, and what do we want here let's put it at something like uh, I don't know, 60, 60 data. Okay, you guys can put it um, wherever you see fit. Uh, and then let's do our polling interval. Here, let's do every 100 milliseconds. And we, we can change that later on. And then our adapter is going to equal adapter. So again, here, what we're needing is we're needing all of this uh, custom JS code. Okay, so we're using JavaScript in here in order to push that data. Okay, so that it's going to be able to um, be readable. So it's basically turning everything from um, using using this callback. Okay, that we can uh, we're creating, and then let's go on and create up some figure. So let's do something like p is equal to uh, figure here. And we want a uh, height equal to, let's say, 800, uh, width equal to 1,000. We'll make it nice and big. Let's do a background uh, fill color equal to um, light blue. Why not? Um, and then let's do a title here. Uh, streaming data with Ajax, okay? And I don't know what uh, we'll actually make it look like, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. And then we also want to uh, use a circle. So we're gonna have basically some points in here with our X, Y, and our source data is equal to our source. And then we want to set up our P range. Or, so for we want our X range here, uh, to be dot follow, okay, until the end, all right? And then we'll do p dot x range here dot follow interval here is going to be every 10 milliseconds. Um, and then we'll have to go on and deal with our flask uh, setup, okay? So let's do flask code is going to be here let's move this on up and we haven't really done a lot with flask uh, throughout any of our series here at data science for everyone but we will probably make something up in the near future uh, because again it's a great way to make up really fast applications so let's look at creating a cross domain here of f and then let's create a wrapper function uh, in here and we want to have our arguments and then our keyword arguments here uh, and then let's go on and run what do we want to run in here? So we want to make our response here, and this will be whatever function that we're throwing in there of our with our arguments here and our keyword arguments. Then we want to create up our headers. 
and then we want to actually go on and fill this in. So H here is going to be our access control allow origin or igen. origin uh, and then this is going to be all oops and then we'll do here for our header here we want access control allow for our methods here and we want this to be get options and post post then we want one more in here, and this is going to be our access control allow here, our max age here. And this is going to be, we need to feed in a string here and we'll do uh, 21, 600. And then let's go on and have our requested headers. Be request dot headers dot get here and we want our access control request headers oops and you guys can't see that and request headers let me get rid of that space here access control request headers check okay now if we have our requested headers. Then we're going to set up our access uh, control to allow the headers. Headers here, and that's gonna be our whatever our requested headers is. And then we want to here return here our response. And we want to then return our uh, our wrapper function. And actually, this is this is probably probably not the best to say to say it's a wrapper function because technically it is a wrapped function because we're using this function in here and we're bringing it in here and we're wrapping it all up because then the function itself is wrapped. So let's call it. I don't know. We could have even just called it birthday present for all all that matters here. X is equal to some list of MP dot a range here of 0, 6, 0 0.1. And then we'll set Y here to be list of MP dot sine of X plus MP dot random dot random of length of X. Uh, so let's go on and fix up our route here. All right, so at app dot route here we want to put this in data methods here again we want get we want options we want post so and they need to match up with everything that we have above at cross domain and then here we want data and then we'll set this up as y dot append x from the end. And then we'll do something like plus 0 0.1. And then y dot append. Whoops. And that is supposed to be x. And then we'll do mp dot sign x of negative 1. Uh, uh, let's do plus mp dot random dot random. Leave that for now, and then we'll return here our JSONify of our points, and this is going to be a list here zipping x and y. And so finally, now we need to actually go about uh, showing and running our app. So we will show p, and then we need app dot run. And then uh, on port equal to, I believe I said 6060. Find it, find it, find it, find it. 
60-60. Okay, and let's run this and, and just see, see how it goes here. Oh, and we have an unmatched bracket, and I thought I saw something in there of here. And we'll just get rid of you. Run. And let's go to, oh, app is not defined. So let's go and see where our issue is. Let's go back and let's find our issue. And again, I feel a little bit silly here. We definitely forgot to uh, set up our app here. So again, not all app is equal to flask name and we should be good to go there run all right and so it looks like everything is not running according to plan at the moment so let's go back and let's kind of debug and see what we are missing here I'll admit the error took me a little bit longer to find than I feel comfortable with. Um, it was actually just right here, okay? I had an extra slash in there. And so if I get rid of that slash, I save this and we go on and run. Then now we actually have our nice interactive uh, graphic using uh, streaming Ajax data. And as you can see here, it kind of has this nice little bit of noise going in there. It's moving around a little bit. Um, and again, you can use this with any type of streaming service data as well. And it's very, very helpful um, to have. And again, that would be just a little bit of, if you wanted to use a different streaming uh, type data source, I can show you guys really quickly uh, how you would go about that. So let's close this down and let me clear this out. And we'll actually not be using any streaming data because uh, I don't really feel like accessing a website or using API, but we can go on about that. And so what you would do, and I'll put this actually just, I'll go in and put it in our code uh, for you guys to have, um, is this Ajax source data URL. Instead of this local host here data, so it would be like here, I can just copy this really quickly. And this would be something like um, your API data source dot com slash data slash data source or something like that. Okay. And then you don't necessarily, you may not necessarily, you may or may not need that adapter. Okay. Um, so I could, you could potentially delete it and then you would have, have your data coming in as well. Um, but that's at least where you would go to utilize that, uh, data source. Uh, so again, we can have all kinds of other examples, um, that you'd want with this. If you guys are interested in it, let me know. If you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.